Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and today we're going to go over um, creating some classes. And actually, we're going to work with our COP4834 sample application that we had worked on. Um, this should be, if you watched the previous three videos, this would be video number four. And I'm going to create some classes and show you some neat little shortcuts and things that you can do. Well, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go over here to my, my application here, and I'm going to put a place to put these put the classes. Now I'm not talking about forms, I'm actually talking about classes. This is all going to be code that we're going to create today and I'm going to show you some of the things that I do when I create code. So the first thing I do is I want to have a place to put it. So um, I'm going to go to my application here and I want to create a you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just I'm right clicking here and uh, what I want to do is I want to create a new folder so I would do add new folder I'm going to call it folder app code just kind of a traditional there you don't have to call it app code uh, some of the old conventions used app code for that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again on app code and now what I want to do is I want to add a class so I'm going to add in this case I'm going to add a class and that will bring up a nice little wizard for class and I, I, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create two classes. My first class is going to be called Global. And I almost always put a global class within every single one of my applications. And what I do with the global class is I use it to keep functions that I want to make global. So I'll give you an example of a global function that I might want to do here. So suppose a lot of times I want to pull numbers out of text boxes. I do a lot of numeric programming. And in the interface, it's kind of clumsy sometimes to go ahead and try to make sure that the thing is a number. And if it's not a number, then you pull it out. So I'm going to do uh, a static. So basically, I don't have to instantiate the class. I'm going to do a static uh, method called get. Uh, and it's going to get integer. So public. And I'm going to show you some neat little hints here. Um, I can go public. And one of the things I can do here is if I hit a tab, it, it turns the thing blue which is kind of nice so you can know that that's something that exists there. Um, I do static int and I call it get integer and I want to pass it a text box. Now watch what I do when I do a text box and I'll call my text box TV. Okay, you'll see that well look the text box didn't turn in any color and the reason is, is that it actually isn't up here in the usings. So I have to know where the text box is. Um, lives within the class libraries. Well, in this case, I do know it's using system dot web dot ui dot. In this case, uh, it's going to be web controls, and that's where it does live. So I should be able to see the text box. Now, in this case, I don't see the text box. What I can do here is I can come over here to my properties. And if you look down here, you see my build action is content. If I change that to compile, okay, that will actually tell this that it wants to compile as it goes along. And now you'll see that the get integer turned red with a red underline and the text box turned blue to show that it was an actual class. Well, the reason that the get integer turned red is because if you look, and you can easily do this by hovering, it says that not all code pass return a value. In fact, none of the code pass return a value. Now, what I would like to do here is I want to return an integer if the contents of the text box can be an integer um, and if not I want to return a zero. So I'm going to actually use a try catch here. Now to do that I could actually use a code snippet and I'll show you how to use code snippets. If I right click and I say insert snippet here I'll have underneath Visual C Sharp a snippet called try. Try catch is try it, see if it works. If not, catch the exception, do something else. Okay, And I could insert it like this. I could insert the try catch. I'll show you another way to do this. I'm going to actually delete that and I'm going to go, I'm going to type in try and hit tab twice and it does exactly the same thing. Nice shortcut to know. So I typed in the try which is my code snippet and voila there I get this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to return this as an integer. So I'm going to use the convert which is actually another global class, a class that I have available here. And I'm going to convert to int32 and I'm going to convert the text of the text box. Now, the text of the text box may not be convertible to an integer, but that's why I do it within a try catch. So if it doesn't work, I'm going to catch it. Now, in this case, if I remove that excep exception clause, it'll catch all the exceptions. I don't need to throw something here. I simply want to return a zero. And that is my nice little 
function there. Uh, get integer, passing it a text box. And I can save that. And now I have the ability to call get integer from my forms. Now remember, if I'm going to do that, I actually have to have the namespace in the using. So I'd have to put a using sample application cop4834.app code, and I'd have access to this global function and this get integer. And it makes things a little bit cleaner and simpler. Well, I'll go over here and I'm going to make one more. And I actually do this almost every time I create a, um, a new project, I do create a global and a common. Common is one of those, um, and I'll do add class. In this case, I'm going to call my class common. And what I do is I create this common class that I inherit pretty much everything from. So class common. And I'm going to show you one thing, a nice little shortcut for properties. You saw that I had a code snippet for creating properties, but now watch what I can do. Prop full, tab tab, and voila, my property, I can now fill in the blanks for a specific property. Here's my accessor, and here's my property, and you can see that that's kind of a nice, neat, and clean thing to do. Now, um, I'm not going to actually, well, I can, I can set this property right now. I'm just going to leave it my there. I can come back to it later, and I can fill in the blanks. One of the nice things here, here is that if I suppose I want this to be a string, I can make it string. Okay, when I tab over, okay, it makes everything that goes with that my string, and I want to call my there my um, connection string or my connection. Okay, now I tab over. Okay, now um, I would probably want to call this something a little bit different, but if you notice, my connection went down here, and I'm going to call this connection string. Okay, and with my convention, I typically go this way, connection string. And that's now a property of common that I could set. Now, why would I do that? Well, I may want to access multiple databases that have multiple connection strings, and I may want to read them from um, the web config, and I can put code in here to do that. Now that we've created these classes, we're going to do one last, last little piece here. Where I'm going to create a class that actually inherits from common. So I'm going to go to app code. And uh, in this case, I'm going to add class. And I'm going to add my domain class. This can be any class that you create that you have to create for your domain. Just create my domain class. There it is. And uh, now, Coming back over to global, make sure that you have the property set to compile on the build action so that you can add this and not get a error. If I go here, I'm going to type in common. Okay, and I'm also going to make sure that I'm using the correct namespace. Here's my namespace. It is, by the way, the same namespace. Which is a sample application cop the 4834 app code. And oops. Put stuff here. Now, if I try to compile this, okay, I have a, a successful build. Everything works. No, no errors. And I can come back over. Now, again, you ask yourself, I would like to be able to see the um, pre-compiled information that I have here. And as you can see, I've got, it's coming up. It does take a little while to bring up the um, web browser and the whole bit. But there's my application. I'm going to go ahead and stop the application. If you want to see the information that's in there, you right click, properties, build action, compile. And sometimes you want this on, and sometimes you don't necessarily want this on. And you see that comment is now highlighted. That's it. Thank you very much.